This is Julian Juicy J Erosa, and you are now tuned in to the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. Get ready for an hour and who knows of daily fantasy sports analysis from our panel of experts. Without further ado, let's meet the team from New York. He's the Don of all Beast Motors, the boat himself, Beast Mode Cow. From Cambridge, Minnesota, he's a father of four and has the most glorious beard in all of the DFS. It's Eric F. And last but not least, he's so St. Louis, ask his tattooist. He's the host of our show, the master of black Negro jiu-jitsu himself, Leroy Stephan. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. I'm your host, the master of black Negro Jitsu, Lil Rod Stephan. I'm joined today by my co-host, CG3 Analytics. What's good, CG3 Analytics? Ready to be back at it here in 2018. And uh, we're here for UFC Fight Night 124, St. Louis, my hometown. It's coming to my hometown of St. Louis. Um, Duho Choi versus Jeremy Stevens is the main event. We've got a great card of tentatively 13 fights. We've got expert fight picks from number four ranked. Is he a featherweight? Josh Emmett. I know he's number four overall in the world. He's doing our fight picks this week. Jimmy Rivera is going to be doing our fight picks next week. That's a that's a top ranked bantamweight, I believe. Um, is he bantamweight Correct. or featherweight? Bantamweight. Yeah, but yeah, Emmett's featherweight. Yeah, so <clears throat> top ranked bantamweight Jimmy Rivera will have him doing picks next week. But uh, I am excited about this St. Louis card. I, I got some real spots that I love, and I think I'm going to build around, at least at this point, have not talked to the numbers guy. That numbers guy, CG3 Analytics, <laughs> yet. But uh, we're going to get that in tentatively right here, right now. We're going to run the expert fight picks by Josh Emmett at the end. Just go ahead and check those timestamps for that. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this card. First fight up, Kyung Ho Kang versus Guido Canetti at 135 pounds. Kyung Ho Kang is going to be coming into this fight uh, at $9,200. Guido Canetti is going to be coming into this fight at $70,000. And oh, Guido Canetti is a, uh, he's a middling talent. He's got some big power in his hands, but he also has been proven to be pretty chinny in the past. Um, we did not see that against Hugo Viana so much, but yeah, man, Guido Canetti, that I, the, the one that I remember, he got rocked a lot in the past. So of course, Alejandro Perez put him out. Briones choked him out. I think he might have been rocked, though, and then choked out. But um, I don't know. At this point... Uh, Kyung Ho Kang is uh he's uh he's on my radar. Kanetti is uh not really at this point on my radar. I gotta do more research on this fight, but I like enough underdogs to where Kang is interesting. And I assume because we haven't seen Kang in a long time, if I play any Kang, maybe I might throw a little Kanetti in there. Um, I like some fights a lot on this card, and I'm kind of choosing to build around those fights. We haven't seen freaking Kang in four years, though. That's something that's kind of worrying to me. So if you do decide to like put be heavy on him, I would do so with discretion. We also haven't seen Guido Canetti in about two years. So this is the uh, this is not a fight spot where you want to use either of these guys heavily. If you play one guy, play the other. I would say I'm going to say Kang. I'm going to favor Kang here. Um, I don't think I'm seeing this in cash. CG3 Analytics. What do the numbers say? So Kennedy's coming into this fight averaging three and a half takedowns per 15 minutes and lands just over three strikes per minute. So his metrics are actually better than Kang. Kang is showing. Uh, just over two strikes per minute, about two and a half takedowns per 15 minutes. But this is one fight where I'm not going to follow the metrics. I watched um, some fights on both of these guys. I just think King is the better fighter. Uh, you mentioned that king has been out for about three years, so that's a legit concern. But what it comes down to for me is 70% of King's wins 
came by submission. And both of Kennedy's losses came by submission. So I think that there's a big opportunity for Kang in this fight. I just don't, I really don't think Kennedy's that good. I just think Kang's more talented. And I think Kang's going to be low owned because everyone's going to want to pay up for Usman. So uh, my preferred play is Kang. Uh, you say he's not that good, but that was like th- f- four years ago, two years ago. He might have improved by leaps and bounds. We don't, I, we don't, I we don't hear know he's training at, I heard Kennedy's training at Team Alpha Mel now. So maybe he did get better. Yeah, and we don't know what Kang is either, man. He, you know, you never know what you're getting when a fighter is fighting this far apart. So, very- I think there's always a big opportunity, though. It's always, you know, the first fight of the night is always usually low owned. So, yeah, very interesting. I think there's a big opportunity. Yeah, a lot of people won't be wanting to build very heavily around that fight. Next up, though, Mike Santiago versus Mads Burnell at 145 pounds. We've got Mike Santiago coming in $8,700. Mads Burnell is coming in at $7,500. I really like Santiago in this spot. He looked really good in his fight with uh, Zabit Magomed Shapirov. I thought he acquitted himself well. Yes, he was subbed out, but um, he held his own. He looked good on the feet. He got, I don't think he got a takedown somewhere in there. That beat Magomed Shapiro. He got two takedowns. That beat Magomed Shapiro is an absolute beast. Mads Burnell, on the other hand, he's a solid uh, fighter, a grappling-based fighter. Uh, not a, not necessarily an elite athlete in any way. Uh, that's my one knock on him. But um, I'm interested in Mads Burnell because he's a grappling-based fighter, and if he wins then he will win by way of grappling. Um, Santiago is my preferred play at this point, but uh, uh, I, I, I don't think I like this fight at all in cash necessarily. CG3, though, what do the numbers say through CG3 analytics? So Mike Santiago is coming to this fight averaging 3.7 strikes per minute. Uh, but my problem with his, him is that he's been submitted eight times and he's going against uh, Mads Burnell who is an accomplished jiu-jitsu practitioner he's a black belt he actually has two Japanese necktie submissions under his belt uh he has a total of five submission victories um but he was completely mauled by preserves in his last fight um then again that fight was at lightweight this fight I believe should be at featherweight um I just don't know how you can trust either one of these guys I think this is another fight that might be low owned. Um, it's a fight that I'm going to hedge, but I will have some exposure to Burnell just because of the fact that Santiago has been subbed eight freaking times and Burnell is very accomplished in jujitsu. Wow. I did not realize that Santiago had been subbed eight times. Um, he has had a lot of fights. When was the, before the uh, Zabit Magomed Shapiro fight, when was the last time he was subbed? Because he is a striking base fighter. So it was looks like early on in his career that was a problem of his. It was January of twenty fourteen. But yeah. he did I mean he has ten losses, eight of those losses are by submission, one by knockout, one by decision. So Yeah, I think that I think he's come a long way then. He looked good against Zabit. I thought that he he grappled very well in that fight. I'm not so much, but yeah, Mads Brunel, grapplers are always, always in play. Mads Brunel is definitely on the playlist for this weekend. Um, if you play Santiago, yes, you probably want to hedge it a little bit with Brunel, but I, I like Santiago. Next fight up, J.J. Aldridge versus Daniel Taylor at 115 pounds. We've got J.J. Aldridge coming in at $8,300. Daniel Taylor coming in at $7,900. And... um. Man, I don't really know what to think of this fight. It's priced pretty evenly, so I guess you should play it evenly. Why it's interesting to me, it's a strawweight fight. Strawweight fights can result in lots of significant strikes, but once again, Daniel Taylor is at an extraordinary height and reach disadvantage. She's got five inches of height. Uh, J.J. Aldridge has five inches of height, 7.5 inches of reach, and that is concerning. Uh, if we want to try and um, project what, how you would say production for Daniel Taylor, because how is she going to get in to get her strikes? J.J. Aldridge is a good on the feet, pretty solid grappler, I guess. Um, but I just wouldn't trust either of these fighters. This should be a very close fight. 
Um, I'm thinking you favor Aldridge a little bit because Taylor is not necessarily the most active or the most active with the takedowns, but she's probably the more athletic here. And seventy nine hundred dollars is a great fi- uh, price for a fighter as balanced and um, and talented as Taylor is. Um, but CG three analytics, what do the numbers say about what we can expect as far as fantasy production in this spot? So on paper, Eldridge has the edge. She has a seven inch reach advantage. She averages four point three strikes per minute compared to Danielle Taylor, who's just under three strikes per minute. Um, Danielle Taylor is one of those fighters, though. Um, she's low output. She's uh, more defensive based, counter striker, but she just always finds a way. You know, she beat Pena, she beat Ham, but she's never scored higher than 66 points. So I think she's a safe cash play. But overall, I think there's more upside with Eldridge. I think Eldridge has a higher ceiling. But for the most part, I don't think you can play this fight in, in tournaments because I don't think it's going to score very highly. I expect the winner to score around 75 points and um, yeah, more of a cash play for me, but um, preferred play is definitely Aldrich. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is a, uh, this is not a cash thing for me. I'd stay away from that in cash. That is not a spot to trust GPP only for that fight. Next fight up, we've got Irene Aldana versus Toledo Bernardo at 135 pounds. Toledo Bernardo is coming. Bernardo is coming in at seventy two hundred dollars. Aldana is coming in at nine thousand dollars, and this is a very interesting fight for me. Aldana is clearly the better, more technical striker, but Aldana struggles with pressure. If you put pressure on her, you completely destroy her her striking production. Toledo Bernardo's uh, strongest point of her game right now is her Brazilian Jiu Jitsu her grappling, her wrestling, and uh, that's something that Aldana has had a problem with throughout her career, kind of. That's something that she said she was focusing on the Leslie Smith fight. We did not get to see it. But Bernardo, if Bernardo does not follow the textbook how to beat Irene Aldana, she's going to lose pretty badly, I would assume. She's not as good of a striker nearly as Aldana. If she puts Aldana on the back foot, makes her strike going backwards, and uh, can get the grappling going. Toledo Bernardo should be in for the win. Arena Aldana has not yet addressed how to deal with pressure. She is kind of Edson Barboza Jr. Uh, at this point, at least in my opinion. I favor, I favor Bernardo as the play, but I could see this going either way, Aldana or uh, Bernardo, but Bernardo is much, much cheaper, much more flexible, so she is the preferred play here. CG3 Analytics, what do the numbers say? That's pretty bold. Aldana's coming to this fight averaging around six and a half strikes per minute. You know, this is your typical fight between striker and grappler, and Bernardo has the uh, grappling advantage, averaging about three takedowns for 15 minutes. But the one thing I will say about Aldana is she has 100% takedown defense thus far in the UFC. So I think Aldana has the edge. I mean, six and a half strikes per minute. I mean, that is some output. So that's what I like to see. I mean, she could very easily land well over 100 significant strikes. And even in a uh, decision win, she can get you more than 100 points. So Aldana is my preferred play. Um, I think she has the takedown defense and the striking to win this one. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely like her, but Bernardo trains with Cyborg. I liked what I saw from her grappling, so... Yeah, got a little. She passed out in her last fight, though, against short notice. It was short notice. Yeah, that's true. Short notice. Short notice. We gotta, we gotta discount that. Next up, we've got Jessica Evil Eye versus at 125 pounds versus Kalindra Faria. Uh, Kalindra Faria is coming in this fight at 8100 dollars. Jessica Eye is coming in this fight at 8100 dollars. You know, Lil Ross Stephens' rule is in play. If it's priced even, guys, play it even. But I don't know about this one, Jessica I typically does not know how to win fights um she has not won a fight in her last five fights and the last time she won a fight was due to tko uh, by a bleeding ear then she lost to alexis davis before that then we had a no decision to kaufman before that so uh, jessica i has essentially not won a clean fight in about Five years, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I like the odds that she does not win against Carolindra Faria here. Uh, 
Clinton Foria was outdone by Moria Romero Barella in her last fight. Barella is a big, strong grappler, though. No shame to be had there. Um, I like Kalindra Foria a lot because Jessica I doesn't know how to win. She just doesn't. Even when she did win, I thought she actually won that Bechko head fight, and she didn't win. So even when she does kind of do enough, she still doesn't get the judges not. Maybe she's got some bad mojo against her, but maybe Kalindra Foria is an excellent cash game play because Jessica I is, oh my God, I have nothing against Jessica I. I have nothing against her. She's a loser. <laughs> so uh, one thing you can count on from I is something to go wrong and her to lose. Uh, she didn't really lose that fight against, uh, who, am I, who else am I thinking about? Was it Pena? She was kind of, she had a chance to win that. Got a point taken away. She lost that too. So she just, she just gets, she just loses. You know, it just happens. So Kalindra Foray is, I think she might be a cash game consideration. I think she's an excellent GPP play. Um, I just think Jessica I finds a way to lose this one somehow. CG3 Analytics, what did the numbers say? Just guys coming into this fight, averaging just over three and a half strikes per minute. Um, there's not a whole lot of, numbers on Kalindra Faria because in her last fight she was just taken down and submitted. She had no takedown defense. She had no jiu-jitsu defense whatsoever. There's a huge opportunity for I in this fight to get it to the ground, but I just don't think she's going to do it because she never ever grappled really. So I, I think if she's standing up and trading, she's playing into Faria's game plan. So I, I don't like that. But I mean, when you really look at Jessica I's record too, I mean, she really only lo she loses to elite fighters. Misha Tate, Juliana Pena, Sarah McMahon. Um, this is Jessica I's first fight at um, flyweight, 125. Oh, I think I agree with you. I think you got to kind of play this even. Although I think Jessica I is going to be very low owned. And I think if she tries to take this fight to the ground, she could win this and even finish Faria. So I hope she takes that into consideration because um, I think there's a big opportunity here to die. Oh, I just feel like um, I just feel like Jessica I never wins. I don't know. That's that's uh, she just she hasn't won in years, man. And when she but did she's win, she's competitive with elite level fighters, though. How do we know Faria is up there? You know? Kalindra Fari, uh, I'll go watch her in Victor fights, man. She's pretty Yeah, solid. I did. I've watched some, but she's got no ground game whatsoever. So True. if I decides to take it there, that's a huge advantage. We know Jessica I never does the right thing, though. She always... It's she very just, low fight IQ, for sure. Yeah, she just... She's a great... She's a very well-rounded and talented fighter. She just finds her way out of the victory. I don't know. Um, Cleveland... We've got LeBron, Stipe. I don't know. They fucked up with I. But anyway, let's go on with uh, the next <laughs> fight. T. Gago Alves versus Zach Cummings at 170 pounds. Um, Tiago Alves is going to be coming into this fight at uh, $7,400. Zach Cummings is coming to this fight at $8,800. And... um. Man, this is a t this is a great fight. Two talented fighters. Um, I really can't. I really like Cummings. Kind, well, kind of, but Tiago Alves is technically in my at least in my head he should be the better striker, and he's got great takedown defense. Like he doesn't get he's not one to get grounded out or anything too much. Um. He's at 170 pounds now, so we shouldn't see any problems with weight cuts as we did in the past. That was a lot of his thing, was really hard weight cuts. But, um, man, I don't think that you can hang your hat on Cummings because the quality of fighter Tiago Alves is. This is a one-time title contender. The only thing that kept him from probably winning a title was the uh, reign of GSP. That being said, Tiago Alves is also probably a USADA guy. You know, he was probably a user back in the day, a Brazilian. We kind of seen some diminishing results from him. So I kind of like to play against that sometimes, but he's, he's a great athlete naturally. So he still looks pretty good. That being said, I think this could be a spot for Cummings. Well, I don't know. I just don't think Cummings scores big here. Like I don't think many opponents have been able to put up big points against um, against Alves. Carlos Condit beat the shit out of him, 
but that's Carlos Condit, uh, natural prime natural born killer. Um, CG three analytics. What did the numbers say? Elvis is coming in this fight averaging 3.6 strikes per minute, which is better than Cummings, who's very low output at 2.6 strikes per minute. I like Elvis a lot in this fight. I think he has some good underdog value. When you look at Zach Cummings and you see his price and then you look at his at his wins, you see Dominique Steele, you see Nicholas Dalby, you see Yakolev, Nathan Coy. I mean, these are not high-level fighters. Um, I, I don't think... The majority of those fighters are still on the UFC's roster. And then he, when he fights a true contender like Ponzinibbio, he actually gave Ponzinibbio a decent fight. But bottom line, I mean, Cummings does not – he hasn't beat high-quality guys. And I think Elvis is going to be his toughest test. And given the, the price disparity, I think Elvis has more value. So he's definitely my preferred play. Yeah. I don't Elvis see is way more battle-tested. Way more battle-tested. True. Although Cummings did look pretty solid against Ponzinibbio, um, he looked solid there. Um, yeah, this is gonna be his toughest fight ever, and it's not really a good matchup because Tiago Alves's takedown defense is pretty legendary. But like I said, he's that post Usada guy, so we could see a dip in at any time. He's getting older too, you know. He's going bald and shit, um, so we could see a dip in that production at any time. But, yeah, I don't see the big fantasy points from Cummings or Alves here. I think this will be a great fight, but a bad fight for fantasy. Nothing in cash here that I can consider. Let's get on to our next fight. Marco Polo Reyes versus Matt Frivola at 155 pounds. We got Polo Reyes at $7,300. Matt Frivola coming in at $8,900. And I don't understand what the fuck Vegas is thinking or what the pricing is here. But why is Matt Frivola a huge favorite? I don't, you know, I'm not the Vegas man. You know, I don't do Vegas. Leroy Stephan is superior to Vegas. He owns Vegas. But um, why is he a negative two thirty favorite over Marco Polo Reyes? I, I have, I have yet to figure this out. I was like, okay, he's a top level wrestler or a top level kickboxer, and I watched the film. And I see this very rudimentary striker that loads up on all of his punches. Marco Polo Reyes is the superior striker. I think he's a superior athlete. And I think he's been tested more up to this point. I really like Marco Polo Reyes, especially at this dumpster bottom price. And I'm not even considering Frivola. I don't see how, why he's supposed to win this fight. I mean, what is his route to victory? Loading up on punches and knocking Polo Reyes out. I mean, is that what you're banking on? Is he going <laughs> to wrestle him down? Hey, no, no. Oh, sorry, guys. We have uh, a guest appearance from Coco Licious here. Sorry about that. But um, I don't see his route to victory here. Sick girl. Um, I just don't get it. And uh, CG3 on the leaks, though, what, what did the numbers say here? Uh, Reyes is coming into this fight averaging almost 6.5 strikes per minute. He's won three of his last four fights. Uh, Frivola looked okay on Dana White Contender Series. I'm with you. I don't understand the odds disparity here. I'm guessing that um, they're looking at um, a, a grappling path to victory for Frivola. He did average three and a half takedowns per 15 minutes. Reyes is poor takedown defense at 40%. Um, Frivola does train at Sara Longo. So, I mean, he's getting some... Uh, Good jujitsu reps over there, but still, I think Reyes has a lot of upside in the spot. Um, very high output striker. Um, finished a couple guys in the UFC, so Reyes is definitely my preferred play, and I think he's a, a great play in tournaments. I don't have any interest in Favola. Oh man, I don't have any interest in Favola either. I love, love, love me some Polo Reyes this week, though. Uh, I think he is an awesome play. I don't know what Vegas is thinking. If you're a betting man, that's a spot to capitalize off of because they definitely uh they fuck that one up. Um, let's get on to our next fight. Hold on. Here we're going to be uh looking at James Krause versus Alex White at 155 pounds. 
James, the James Kraus. Uh, I believe that's his nickname. $8,400. The Spartan, Alex White at $7,800. And, hmm, I just don't know what to think about this fight. Alex White is pretty good now, but I think James Kraus is pretty uh, much more advanced in every area. James Krause should be better on the ground. I think he's a better striker. I think he's a better athlete. He's definitely more experienced. Um, Alex White did look pretty good in his his uh, his destruction of Mitch Clark. Mitch Clark is a very one note fighter. Uh, Tony Martin had uh you know had a great performance against uh, Alex White. I just think that Alex White is the type of guy where. He is uh, still a growing and develop fight, developing fighter. Very young. I don't think he beats a guy as as, as experienced and, and, and talented and athletic as James White, uh, James Krause, excuse me. I just I just think nine times out of ten is probably should be James Krause's uh, uh, fight. I don't know if Krause is definitely a lock and load GPP play, but in cash he probably is a pretty good play if I think about it. Um, James Krause. I figure he should take this fight. He is, at this point, let's look at Vegas to help us with our projection. He's only a negative 155 favorite, which is, uh, I think that's very low. He started off as a negative 230 favorite. I think that's more accurate. Um, I don't think I like any Alex White. Mitch Clark was kind of hanging in there on the feet with Alex White. So if he could do it, I definitely know Krause is going to be able to roll here. CG3 Analytics, though, what did the numbers say? James Krause is coming in this fight averaging almost 4.7 strikes per minute. Alex White averages just under four strikes per minute. To be honest, I think this fight is very close. I plan to have exposure to both sides. I like the fact that James Krause is going to be fighting in front of his hometown crowd. But Alex White, he's showed a lot of power, I think, in his last fight against Mitch Clark. I know Mitch Clark's not an elite fighter by any means, but I um, I think if, if you were watching the Ultimate Fighter Redemption series, Kraus can be broken. And I just think White's a lot tougher. It's, uh, it, it's a tough fight to call. I think I think Kraus is going to win the fight, but I think you have to play both sides. And, um, you know, if you want to attack the mid-range, I think that you have to have exposure to this fight. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know about playing both sides of that one. I kind of like James Krause. I'm gonna call up some since this fight he is from the Missouri you, area. I'm gonna call you up some said friends. It, you said it though. I mean, if he started as a minus two thirty favorite, now he's at minus one fifty five. That means a lot of bets are coming in for White. True. I don't know why though. I'm gonna have to get some expert analysis here. He he is from the area. I'm gonna call up some friends, get some get some insight on this, and uh, we'll tweet you about it. Let's get on to our next fight here let me look at my schedule fights here oh man why is michael johnson not on the main card we'll have to save that for another show oh it's the next fight uh michael johnson versus darren the damage elkin at, at 145 pounds michael johnson right here from st louis missouri uh his his friend family actually always brings him emo's pizza after the fights uh lo love uh him uh, or he loves him some Emo's Pizza. If you've never had Emo's Pizza, you're not from here. You don't know. It's the Square Beyond Compare Thin Crust Pizza. I think it's a St. Louis special. Anyway, enough about pizza. Michael Johnson is coming in at $8,600. Darren Elkins is coming in at $7,600. And, <clears throat> man, Michael Johnson is a guy that I kind of want to say he's going to beat the shit out of Darren Elkins. But it's the damage. The damage always comes in as an underdog. We always be like, oh, the damage isn't athletic enough. He's not talented enough. You know, he takes too much punishment. But the damage has been coming through big, and he's looked great since his move to um, uh, Team Alpha Male. I figure, like, Ma Michael Johnson should roll over him because he's such a better athlete. And, Darren El and he's so fast. And how is Darren Elkins going to get his hands on him? But when people do get their hands on Michael Johnson and they're as talented a grapplers as Darren Elkins is, they kind of maul him up pretty good. So I, um, yeah, I don't know. I like Darren Elkins a lot, but 
Michael Johnson is mad about getting snubbed here. Uh, he's mad about, um, at least for the main card, he's not on the main card this week. He's um, he's motivated, and I, I'm going to have a lot of Michael Johnson. I'm going to have a good part of Michael Johnson, too, but I love the damage, man. The damage comes through constantly. I don't know why people still keep opening fighters against him as large favorites. Oh, Michael Johnson opened. He didn't open as that big a favorite, actually. So I don't even know why he's priced so high at $8,600. But, uh, yeah, I like both sides of the fight. I think Michael Johnson should win, but you know how the damage does it, man. He makes it ugly, and then he takes it late. CG3 Analytics, what did the numbers say? Johnson's coming in this fight averaging around four strikes per minute. Elkins lands around three takedowns per 15 minutes, so another classic fight between striker and grappler. Elkins is on a five-fight win streak, and Michael Johnson lost four of his last five fights. So I think it's a tough fight to call. I think Johnson has some of the quickest hand speed <clears throat> in the lightweight division. But, he, oh, he's actually coming down to featherweight for this fight. So his first fight at featherweight. So I don't know. I, I learned a long time ago that you can never bet against Darren Elkins. At least every time I do, I lose. So to be honest, I don't know what to expect because Johnson gassed out in his last two fights. So can you trust him? Can you trust his cardio in this well, fight? Well, shit, I, I he, was get, he was getting his ass beat against Khabib. I can't really call that gas what out. A, That's just what about ass Gaethje, though? What about Gaethje? He gassed out. Well, he was he getting hit out. to the body. He was getting hit to the body a million times. He got in that brawling type of state, which is why I like. Elkins here because that's what Elkins want to make it man exactly Elkins is going to pressure him and yeah so I to be honest I don't have a whole lot of confidence in this fight I'm going to play both sides but um I I don't really have a preferred play I like I like the damage boy yeah I keep on going back and forth I like the damage. Yeah, but it's it, I can't say 100% damage. I'm going to have Michael Johnson because he's in St. Louis, but they snubbed him off the main card. We, maybe it's not his night. Next fight up, Kamar Usman versus Emil Weber Meek at 170 pounds. Um, Kamar Usman is going to be coming to this fight at $9,400. Meek is going to be coming to this fight at $6,800. Usman all day long all day strong lock them in cash gpps that's my nigga for real this week next week or the week after as long as he fights fighters on this level uzman 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 don't fade uzman in any format if you have the cash not to if you have the cash cg3 analytics what did the numbers say Usman's coming in this fight averaging over four strikes per minute and almost four and a half takedowns per 15 minutes. There's not a whole lot to analyze here. I've said it before on the show that I think uh, Usman is the best welterweight on the planet. I hope he beats Meek and then immediately calls out Colby Covington. They need to give this guy a big fight, but nobody wants to fight him. And I don't blame them. <laughs> so Usman in both formats. Usman, yes. I love Usman. This is this is a shine spot, man. This, they feeding Meek to the wolves here. Or to the Nigerian nightmare, let that be said. Um, next fight up, we're going to have Paige Van Zant versus Jessica Rose Clark at 125 pounds. Oh, boy. Paige Van Zant is going to be coming to this fight at $8,000. Jessica Rose Clark is the basically the favorite here at $8,200. Once again, guys... What is Vegas smoking here? What What are you guys thinking? Jessica, Jesse, Jess over PVZ? No way. No how. Jesse, Jess is wrestling is terrible. Her activity in that high. I mean, she's getting, she's definitely getting better. But over PVZ? Nah, this ain't her spot, man. PVZ all day long, all day strong. I love her in cash. I love her in GPPs. I almost kind of consider her unfatable because of her activity and how many significant strikes she lands. Why? How do you fade Paige Vincent this week? Is there a reason to? I mean, I don't see the avenue to victory for Jessica Rose Clark. She's not active enough. Her counter grappling isn't good enough. Paige Vincent all day. They put this matchup together for her to shine. Uh, in a new division at 125 pounds, she might be even more active with extra 10 pounds of leeway. Oh, yes, because she was really having a tough time with weight cuts. So we might see a better, stronger, more active version of PBZ. Uh, I, like I said, cash, GPPs, I'm locking PBZ in at this point. CG3 Analytics, what did the numbers say? 
Never trust a woman with two first names. But uh, Jessica Rose Clark is coming in this fight averaging almost seven strikes per minute. So she beat Beck Rollins in her last fight. And I think Jessica Rose Clark is going to be the bigger, stronger woman in this fight. Uh, right before the show, I was watching that Rose Clark, Beck Rollins fight. And between the second and the third round, Rollins was complaining to her quarter. She was saying, this woman is strong. You know, so you got to remember, Paige Van Zandt is coming up from straw weight to fight in this fight, which is at flyweight 125. So that does concern me. But uh, Paige Van Zandt is averaging around three and a half strikes per minute, um, about 1.7 takedowns per 15 minutes. The thing about Paige Van Zandt, <laughs> Hold on, though, CG3. Are you really quoting up? Beck Rawlings? Beck Rawlings is... Beck Rawlings got finished by PVZ. Jessica Rose Clark couldn't finish her. She was kind of, she was losing the fight before the switch kicked though. Uh, I hate to say I hate to say it was lucky, man. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's watch, a great watch, point. We watched. I, I forgot the about fight. that. That's true. That's very she true. She was losing that fight, and then she whipped out that kick out of her ass. That's but, true. Um, <laughs> this is true. I, I I I correct myself. I forget. I forgot all about that. Hey, let me finish, man. I was gonna say that when Van Zant wins, she typically puts up. You know, around 90 to 100 points. So that's what I like about her. Um, and plus, you know, the UFC really wants to market Paige Van Zandt. Would they put her in a spot to lose? I don't think they would. So my preferred play is Van Zandt. But um, it does concern me that she's going from 115 to 125 to fight even, this woman that to fight this woman that couldn't even make 125 in her last fight. Even though that, you know, she was almost passing out and dying from the weight cuts, basically. You hadn't heard about that? Page was? Yeah, man, it's bad. It was real bad. Yeah, she so, always made weight though. Yeah, but it was it was hell for. Her, so I like twelve gauge. I don't. I'm not fading twelve gauge. That's my spot right there. I'm putting my foot down. Twelve gauge, one hundred percent. I hope it didn't burn me. Um, Vitor Belfort versus Uriah Hall at one hundred eighty five pounds. We've got Uriah Hall coming in at ninety one hundred dollars. Vito Belfort is coming in at seventy one hundred dollars. Hmm. I don't know what's with the uh, the odds disparity here. I, I can't trust either of these guys. Uh, we we just never know what Uriah Hall we're gonna get. You never know. Well, B, we do know what Vitor Belfort we're gonna get post Usada Vitor Belfort. Um. Yeah, he's post. Yeah. So, what do we expect here? We expect Uriah Hall to. If he gets his wrestling going, I guess that's one route to victory. But Vito Belfort is pretty good off his back against non-elite wrestlers. Uriah Hall is not a former Division One guy or anything like that. Remember, he uh, Vito almost broke John Jones's arm, or he did break it, as a matter of fact. But John Jones survived and kept on fighting. Um, Vito is Chan is gone. He's as fragile as glass at this point. Oh man. Vitor, Vitor, Vitor. What do I have to say about Vitor? Um, at seventy one hundred dollars against Uriah Hall, Uriah Hall is like a box of chocolates. We never know which one we're gonna get. Will this be uh, prime time Uriah Hall, or will it be who you know the the uh, anomaly Uriah Hall, the bizarre guy that goes in and does does relatively nothing and loses by some controversial decision? Vitor is an interesting GPP target, but I don't know if he's a very good one because I don't see the points here. Even in a win, he should win by like decision. I don't see the knockout. Um, I don't see the grappling points. And I like a lot of underdogs on this card. So Vitor Belfort is... Yeah, he's not very interesting. I'd rather have Uriah... Ha I mean, um, Kamar Usman all day long. So I just I couldn't see myself too often playing Vitor Belfort unless it's in a lineup with a lot of dogs and I'm just trying to mention I mean Uriah Hall excuse me unless it's in a lineup with a lot of dogs and I'm trying to like fit somebody in so not too much Uriah Hall for me Vitor Belfort is consideration is seventy one hundred dollars um neither one of these guys in cash. Uriah Hall is he's a strong play though, because if he wins, he could definitely win by knockout very early. So I like Uriah Hall. Like him. Vitor Belfort doesn't have much left as in the chin. He gets hit and he goes. So Uriah Hall is an excellent GPP play, but it's gonna have to be in one of those lineups where it's like a couple dogs in it, you know. But don't go playing him over 
uh, Uzman or some crazy like that. CG3 in the leagues, what did the numbers say? So Hall's coming into this fight averaging just over three strikes per minute. He had a nice comeback victory in his last fight over Christoph Jocko. I like him in this spot. I really do. I don't think Belfort poses much of a threat. And according to fight metrics, um, his stats are absolutely awful. 1.6 strikes per minute, uh, just over one takedown for 15 minutes. I don't really see a path to victory for Belfort. I mean, he's 40 years old. He lost three of his last four fights. His, I mean, I, I, I honestly thought he lost that last fight against Nate Marquardt. Uh, his last win before that was Dan Henderson when he was probably on steroids. So you mentioned that you don't like your eye Hall and cash. I think Hall's pretty safe in both formats. And I think that I don't think it's a bad thing to have some high dollar contrarian plays because I think Usman's ownership is going to be astronomical. So I like your eye Hall in both formats. Yeah, I mean he's definitely in consideration, but not over, not over Usman. If it's like Uriah Hall or no. Usman, no way, no, not at all. Yeah, but definitely he's. I, I definitely want some exposure because Vitor Belfort is gone. Like uh, Justin Timberlake said in that song, he, his his motherfucking ass is gone. Um, his chin is at least. Uh, he's still talented though. His chin is just it's not there anymore. Anyways, on to our next fight. We've got the Korean Superboy, Do Hoi Choi, versus Jeremy Lohethan Stevens at $7,700. Do Hoi Choi is coming in at $8,500. Um, very interesting fight here. Choi is, Choi is my guy in this fight. Jeremy Stevens is talented. He's good, but he's like, you never know. What Jeremy Stevens is going to show up? Is it big time upset Jeremy Stevens or is it Gilbert Melendez style Jeremy Stevens where he got, well, no, yeah, where, where he, or, or actually big time upset Jeremy Stevens is Gilbert Melendez, Jeremy Stevens. Or are we going to see like the Jeremy Stevens that showed, you know, it's, it's always a different Jeremy Stevens that showed up. Sometimes very underwhelming. Sometimes you're like, damn, that was amazing. But I think Choi is, like, the superior striker. I think he's going to be the superior grappler to an extent. He's got more. Uh, they both have power, but I just don't see Stevens presenting too much threat for Choi outside of his power. I don't think Stevens is better than Cub Swanson or, prevents, or presents more challenges um, as far as boxing and striking go. And Choi, is, he's got a lethal. Is that a right or a left? I forget. But uh, I like Choi. I'm Choi in cash, Choi in GPPs. Stevens is not a spot that I want to try and differentiate myself at. I'll be differentiating myself other places. Um, CG3 Analytics, though, what did the numbers say? So Korean Superboy is coming to this fight, winning eight of his last nine fights by TKO. He also averages five and a half strikes per minute. The thing about Choi, though, is he also absorbs 6.2 strikes per minute, so his striking defense is not good. Uh, Jeremy Stevens is coming off an impressive win over Gilbert Melendez. Currently, he's averaging just around three strikes per minute. <clears throat> but I think it's worth noting that uh, for Jeremy Stevens, shoot, what was it? Uh, his last five fights went to decision. So I know he has this reputation for being this massive finisher, but the last time he finished anybody was Dennis Bermudez back in July of 2015. So my preferred play is Choi, but because of Choi's defensive deficiencies, I think you also have to hedge this a little bit with Jeremy Stevens because, you know, Choi was knocked down a couple times by Cub Swanson. So I, I do think you have to hedge this fight, but Choi is definitely going to be my preferred play. And I think you have to play this fight in tournaments. Yeah, I like Choi in uh, in in cash. You could consider stacking it because Stevens, he ain't the type of guy to get yeah, he finished. Could. He ain't the type of guy to get finished. So that's he's an, true. He's an it's an excellent stack, I think. But Choi puts people away. So I might want to play Michael Johnson or somebody else in in, in cash. Maybe I mean, uh, excuse me, Darren Elkins, Bernardo, Polo Reyes, people that. I like a little better salary savers that I like a little better there in cash. Oh boy, but that does it for the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast for this week, guys. Be on the lookout for Black Market Picks. School of Black Negro Jitsu should be coming out at the end of this week, which will be fe featuring Josh Emmett. Then next week, our show will be featuring J El Terra, Jimmy, Rivera, or 
I don't know. Maybe I'll do Rivera and then I'll do Josh Emmett because Rivera has some interesting news on him. But Josh Emmett is on this show today. I have not forgot. He's got our expert fight picks for the week. So let's go ahead. Uh, thanks for guys for tuning in. But let's go ahead and get those expert fight picks, guys, from Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett, welcome to the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. Great to have you. I'm going to get your quick picks for UFC Fight Night 24, 124, uh, St. Louis. Uh, let's start off in the 135 pound division. Kwong Ho Kang versus Guido Canetti. Who you got? Guido. Guido. Mike Santiago versus Mads Purnell at 145 pounds. That's your division. Yeah, I'm going with Santiago. J.J. Aldrich versus Daniel Taylor at strawweight. Huh, I'm not even sure. Who, who is it? J.J. Aldrich versus Daniel Taylor. Uh, J.J. It, it doesn't. If you don't know, we'll skip it. We'll skip it. Uh, they, they're too <laughs> young. Skip that one. Yeah, they, they, they're two young fighters. Irene Aldana versus Talito Bernardo. Uh, not sure either. Okay, so it's all it's okay. The UFC has so many fighters these days, man. It's impossible to keep up with this roster. Jessica I versus Kalindra Faria. Uh, let's go. Who's Jessica I fighting? Kalindra Faria. Let's go, Jessica I. Tiago Alves versus Zach Cummings at 170 pounds. So Zach Cummings. Polo Reyes versus Matt Frivola. At 155 pounds. I don't know. Let's go Polo Reyes. James Krause versus Alex White at 155 pounds. James Krause. Let's keep it unbiased here. Michael Johnson versus Darren the Damage Elkins at 145 pounds. Elkins. Why? What's that? I say why. Uh, cause he, man, he's a damage. He's going to go out there and just do his thing. You know, he's a grinder. He's a gamer. That guy, you really have to put him out in order to stop him. He's going to keep coming. And he's a guy that, you know, his name says it right there. Like he'll take, you know, sometimes he'll get into a dog fight, sometimes take a beating, but when people can't put him away, I, I think, you know, Michael Johnson has great hands. He's really fast, but I think once he gets into a fight and it's not going his way, then he can start to break, and Darren Elkins will not break. <laughs> so, we, yeah, we saw that against Burside Bektic, uh, Bektic, Kamaru Usman versus Emil Weber Meek at 170 pounds. Let's go, Usman. Paige Van Zant versus Jessica Rose Clark at 125 pounds. Let's go, Paige. Why? What do you? Why do you think Paige wins this fight? And, and same thing with her. The other girl, she's. She's one and zero in the UFC. You know, Paige is a gamer too. You know, sometimes she'll have uh, she'll be the underdog, or it'll be look like a mismatch fight. But when she gets in there, she just flips the switch, and uh, you know, she's she's a, another animal too. She'll just uh, she'll just keep coming and coming. She has heart, and and same thing with her. You know, she she really she's hard to break, and and she just mixes it up and makes it a dog fight, which some people can't can't handle that, and we've seen time and time again. Yeah, I got Paige Vincent too. Vitor Belvert for versus Uriah Hall. Uriah Hall. Why do you think Uriah Hall wins that fight? I think he's just more, you know, more of an athlete. He's a uh, he's more powerful, more explosive. Um, you know, Vitor Belfort's a legend of the sport, but I, I think he's kind of, you know, towards uh, the end of his career, and I think Uriah Hall is just, you know, ages on his side, and he's just. He's just too good. If if uh, Uriah Hall were to fight Belfort when Belfort were in his prime, then I'd definitely go with Belfort. But I, I think it's it's uh, his career is almost up. Yeah, I, I think Bel- Belfort isn't quite durable enough to. Uh, but who knows, man? It's it's a strange fight there. Yeah, it's a fight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man. Who knows? I wouldn't bet on that. Uh, Jeremy Lil Heathen Stevens versus Du Ho Choi. Two fighters uh, now ranked well below you. In the rankings, who you got? I'm going with uh, Jeremy uh, Stevens. Yeah, I think no. the same thing. He's just he's too uh, he's too powerful. He's uh, 
he's just he's just a well-rounded fighter, and I, I think uh, his power is going to be too much for Choi. I know Choi can take a punch, and he can he has good boxing as well. But I think Steven is just going to you know mix it up too much for him, and and, and I really just think he's he's the the bigger, more powerful um, fighter, and he's going to put it on him.